Hey there, today I'm gonna to show you how to fix this broken pricing card layout with CSS Subgrade in four easy steps. Hey there, Webbay. All right, first thing you wanna do is grab our master layout, which is the parent of all our items, pricing underscore grid, and make sure that has display grid applied to it. If it was block, it would look like this, but we want grid. And so I've got four column grid here. Now we need to take all the children and apply display grid to that. So if I take this, then these have grid, but notice that these are all kind of off because there's different content in here and they all are on their own grid system. They're not on the parent grid system. And CSS subgrade is what allows us to do that. So the first thing we wanna do is we wanna tell our children what grid lines to use, the rows or the columns and how to use it. So in order to do that, I'm gonna scroll down here to our custom CSS properties and I'm gonna look for grid template rows because what I wanna do is I want each item or each child of item to line up in one of those rows. And so I'm talking about these items all in here, these HTML elements. Okay, so we've got item and we've applied grid template rows. And what we want to say here is that we want to set that to subgrid, just like that. And whoa, everything is stacked on top of itself because we haven't specified exactly how many rows to take. So we can do that with the grid rows property. So grid rows, and I'm going to say, oops, Webflow automatically gave me grid auto rows, but I want grid rows, which is here at one, and we will set this to be span. And then what you need to do now is count how many elements you have inside of item. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight here. So I'm going to span eight rows. And now everything is blown up and all aligned just as we need to see it. And this should be all you need to get it working, but Webflow makes us go one extra step. And what is going on here? So if I open up the inspector and I go ahead and inspect one of these items, let's go up to our parent, I'm looking for this one here. So I went up to this parent and then this is the layout parent. And if we hover, we see that it has grid here and these have subgrid and they're looking at the grid guides for this grid, but they're a certain min height. And that min height is 75 pixels here, which is defined by this grid template rows property that we didn't actually specify in Webflow. If we look at pricing underscore grid and we come up to grid, we see that rows actually have a, an auto property to generate but that's not what Webflow is actually doing. It's actually making those a little bit taller so that they're clickable in the Webflow CSS grid. So we can override that by coming down to custom properties. We'll paste our grid template rows and we'll say auto and give the important flag here to make sure that we override that. And now we see everything is lining up just as we need. How cool is that? Really easy to get a nice pricing card layout structure here. Now subgrid would make it really easy for Airtable to manage their pricing page. We see here we have four cards and these are actually done in rows. So if I click one of these, we'll see that this, like the four teams and departments who need advanced, and then I come up here and then come up here, it's not flowing in the DOM how you would expect to read it, which would be top down or everything within one item. So it's really interesting. The way they've decided to try to solve this is by having um, like, you have to set the border, you know, here. And so on each of these different divs, you're setting the border on each one, on each row. And then it also means that they bought themselves into a mobile and a desktop version of their cards. So we can see here over this call 12, which is defining our uh, layout here. If we go ahead and select these on desktop, we're able to see the, the highlight there. But as I close, now as I select these, we have a whole different layout and card system used. And we can tell that by we have this small hide and medium hide classes there for whatever framework that they're using. And we've got this large hide, which is the one holding the pricing columns here. So now they're using just a block element or a grid or something. Uh, let's see. Yeah, so now they're using just display block inside of this. And then each of these have the elements in there. So anytime they update their pricing or their plans, they need to update it in two places, um, which is not desirable. And so to fix this, we can just go ahead and drop an empty div, drag it right above the button there. And Webflow again specifies a min height of 75 pixels. So let's just go and override that with a width of zero and a height of zero. And now CSS subgrid knows, hey, there's an element in here that I do need to account for, but it, it's empty, I don't care about it. But just so that it takes up that space and all of our buttons are still nice and aligned on this row here. So subgrid makes it really easy to work on these things. And now let's say we went down to a different breakpoint and we started changing our columns. So I've changed it to be a two column layout now. 
And we can see things are flowing nicely and updating even in the next row there so that they're all updated and look good. The other reason I'm excited about CSS subgrid making it to all browsers is that we can start building layout systems with this. So let's say I define a layout grid, which is my parent or my kind of dominant um, overarching grid system, right? Which here I have a 12 column grid system. So I have this top line and this notice has subgrid and I can set the grid column start and the grid column end. So right now it's full and full, which means it's going from all the way on the left bleed to all the way on the right bleed. And then each little accent here, I can override. So I have row call and I haven't, this just gives grid template columns and grid template rows um, to each one of these. And so let's find the third one here and see I've just overridden grid column to eight. Say I come to seven, now it's on the seventh column and go back to six. So some really interesting ways that we can start playing with grid systems and layout systems. And you see, I've kind of been working on this half-half system here that has a column span for the uh, header. And then the image is spanning two rows and then a, another hero P tag here. I haven't fully fleshed out how I want this to work, but if I develop more on this, then I'll be sure to share a video about that. If you like learning about hot new CSS, then I recommend you check out this cross document view transitions video that I made a couple days ago, which details the view transitions API and how we can make animated page transitions really easily with CSS. Used to need stuff like Barba.js and a lots of JavaScript to do this, but now CSS makes it really easy. All right, thanks for watching and see you in the next video.